Yeah, it, it's important to know that regardless of what you've done wrong in life, praise God, God has made it possible for your sins to be forgiven. Yeah, don't let nobody hold your past over your present to block you from your future. It doesn't matter what you, where you've been. It's not that important, praise God, what you used to do. What are you doing now? I know some of us want to make folk think that we've never done nothing wrong. That we always been on the up and up. Praise God. But I don't care who you are. Everybody have done something at some time. My God, sometimes, praise God, the enemy want to make you think or make us feel like our living is in vain. Make you think you're going through is in vain. Even when it comes down to death and dying. Praise God. Death is not the end for the, church, for the children of God. Death is not the end. Death is just a comma. Praise God, but there is life on the other side of death. I wish I had some help in here. I said there's life on the other side of heaven. On the other side of this life, there is life. Amen. And, and Paul was telling the church in Ephesus, amen, that you have a great inheritance. Amen. And he began to write to them and tell them so many things about who they are and what their uh, place was in this earth and talk to the church and let them know praise God that they were children of God yeah, yeah. that one time they were dead to God amen in the second chapter he began to tell them that you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins but then he moved on down to the fourth verse and said to them but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sin had quickened us you might have been dead praise God but when Jesus come into your life you're not dead anymore but now that you have life the Bible says he that is born of Christ you have life you are not just dead but you have life why are you yet living and I said a redeeming fire and even to the Prince of Peace Temple, there's going to come a time, praise God, when folk are going to leave the church. I saw this beautiful praise team up here, praise God, and looking at these beautiful musicians and knowing how this man prepares himself for ministry. Sometime I called him and he said, Reverend, I'm getting this word ready. And it's going to take me all day to get it ready. It's a sad thing when you go through that kind of extent and that kind of preparation to give you what God would have you to have and you won't even come and get it. No. I mean, you, 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 you would rather sit home and watch television or find an excuse Rather than come and get what God has labored and given you to the man of God. And I, I, and, I, and, I, and I feel that when my wife cook a nice meal, one of the worst things I can do is after she is cooked for me to come walking in the house with a bag from McDonald's. Prayer is always in order. There's never a time when you should not pray. So Paul said, I tell you what, pray always. When things are good, pray. When things are bad, pray. When your bills are paid, pray. When your bills are due, pray. Because prayer is always in order. Prayer is something, praise God, and it's so sad that, for me to say that many churches spend more time singing than praying. You'd be surprised at how many churches today have lost a hunger to pray. I ain't getting no amens. We call our 
ourselves saints. We, we say we are saints. We say we are Christians. But we don't spend no time with God. How in the world are our children going to be better if they never hear us pray and you never teach them how to pray? Oh, we getting an attitude because of what's going on in the news media today. Praise God, we want the teachers to do the job. Yeah, we want the teachers to raise our children. We want the next door neighbor to raise our children. Praise God, when we come to church, we want our church to raise our children. When we won't spend no time with them praying. I'm not talking about sitting and waiting because you got a word from some prophet who came and told you that God is going to give you a new car and you don't even pay time. You, you won't even give in church. And you let somebody come and fool you that God going to give you something. And you got some folk been paying tithe and doing what God says. Amen. They come to church every time the church doors are open. They do everything they can for the cause of Christ. And they are still waiting. And here you come because you got a few glitters around you. And that preacher can look and see that you are pretty well off and call you up out of the crowd. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about somewhere that I've heard. Some not here. I'm talking about in another city I heard. Yeah. Some preacher call you up because you got on a, a real nice suit and a real nice dress and see that you are looking all right and call you up and tell you, oh, yeah, people don't like you. People are jealous of you. Oh, yeah, people uh, 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 don't, they don't appreciate you. But I see God taking you higher. I see you getting a new car. I don't need all of that, praise God. All I need to know, amen, is I got a telephone in my bosom. And I don't need no. There is not a friend like the Lord, the Jesus. No, no, not one. No. No, not one. No one can heal all of your soul diseases. Let me hear you say no. No, not one. No, no, not one. I'm going to tell you, Jesus, he knows all about your struggles. And he will guide you to the day. It's done. Oh, there is not one friend like the Lord, the Jesus. I'm going to tell you no. No, not one. No. 